Okay, Dad, it's been a little while since we've talked about the chip shortage. We have some pretty breaking news. The U.S. government moving swiftly to try and remedy and bring back chips to the United States. We have CEOs of massive semiconductor companies saying, all right, we're sold out for, for the next the next couple months, if not years. And Dad, honestly, we have updates from Auto Forecast Solutions where the number of vehicles lost just from the chip shortage continues to rise. I'll kick it over to you first, though, on the uh, what, what was recently passed by the U.S. government. What's your take on the multi billion dollar deal to bring chips to America? Uh, well, obviously, you know, we, we see a lot of comments on our YouTube channels. Well, we need to bring chip manufacturing back to the United States. We shouldn't be dependent on Taiwan and China for these chips. So the Senate has passed a bill that will will invest $52 billion, that's billion, uh, to encourage the chip industry to come back to the United States to set up more facilities in the United States. And $2 billion is earmarked specifically to produce the legacy chips that the automakers need so that we don't run into this this massive chip shortage. And uh, obviously, the government feels that we would be in a much more competitive situation for the United States to have the chips being built here rather than depending on uh, foreign countries to produce the chips. Um, so I, I would, you know, I haven't taken a real close look at the legislation, but I, I would think initially at first blush, it, it's a it's a good sign for bringing some of the manufacturing back to this country. And let's be clear, it's passed the Senate, it needs to pass the House, it could change, it likely will change, but there's optimism that this time this bill will pass, and that it's also worth mentioning, put it in perspective here, Auto Forecast Solution puts out weekly updates for the number of vehicles lost globally due to the chip shortage. Right now, the most recent update we have for them is more than 3.6 million vehicles expected to be lost from production this year. Last year, Dad, keep me honest here, was it 10 million, 12 million? What did we get up to? It was somewhere between 10 and 12 million. So we're looking at 15-ish million vehicles taken out of production because of this chip shortage. And and automakers here in the United States have been begging the government to do something to try and help them actually be able to procure more chips and be able to produce more vehicles. The reality is, Dad, and this is interesting from NXP Semiconductors CEO and also just from all that we've learned from David Chow of Automotive Press and others, it's not like you can just snap your fingers and there's a chip. These things take years to actually set up dad remember when we did all the research into asml the company that actually creates the machinery to mm -hmm. create the chips there's no short-term fix here no matter how many billions of dollars you throw at it oh no the, it, it takes from the time you say you're going to build the plant to the time that the plant becomes operational is somewhere between two to three years so yes this is good news uh, yes, moving forward three, four years from now, um, perhaps we will have completely solved the the issue of having enough chips for automotive because we finally opened some plants in this country. Um, but it's it like you say, it's not it's not an overnight solution, but it is uh, the start of of what I would call a new manufacturing revolution in this country. Thinking about getting an extended warranty? Go to joinyaa.com and check out our pricing there. There's no obligation, no spam, no robocalls. YAA for your extended warranty. And that NXP Semiconductor, who they sell half of their chips to automakers, their CEO said, hey, we're actually sold out through this year, mm -hmm. um, so we can maybe get you orders for next year. We've been tracking over time. Bloomberg has a nice nifty chart of the lead time, how long from placing an order to actually receiving chips. Remember, Dad, it was like a month ago. It was on the homepage of Automotive News. It ticked down like one-tenth of a week, and they were like, there's a bright spot in the chip <laughs> crisis. The lead times have gone from 36 weeks to like 35.8 weeks. We're still looking at a period of time where getting chips is difficult. That being said, Dad, yes. community members, members of our community who are previous dealer principals, work in automotive, what we're hearing is that chips are actually a bit more... They've got the chip supply. It's other raw materials that automakers are struggling to get their hands yeah, on right now. Chips are more available now than they have been for quite some time. But as you say, there are other supply chain issues that are preventing especially the Asian manufacturers in their home countries uh, from being able to produce the vehicles in the requisite numbers that they had hoped to. Yeah, and let's hit on that for a second, Dad, because Toyota, who obviously is well known within the industry for their just-in-time manufacturing and really spearheading uh, efficient manufacturing, they've actually been able to um, do more offshore 
manufacturing than onshore manufacturing in Asia specifically. They're struggling to get yes. raw materials, energy, the things required to actually produce things. They're looking to do more offshore manufacturing, doing more things here in the United States, Latin America, Europe, et cetera, because producing vehicles in Asia right now, Honda is an example of that. Toyota is an example of that. Domestic production is way down. It is in, in Japan, and and as you state, yes, they're moving more and more of their production capability um, to the United States, North America, uh, Mexico, uh, Europe, as, as opposed to concentrating so much of it in, in uh, Japan at the moment because um, the issues aren't quite as exacerbated in the rest of the world as they seem to be in Japan itself. Yeah, it's fascinating. So you've got the federal government passing legislation that'll maybe have an impact three years from now, two years at the earliest from now. You have countries where they have a lot of this infrastructure in place struggling the most to do domestic production. Uh, and you have the leaders of these different companies saying, hey, yeah, you can get these orders, but you're going to just have to wait at least six months because we're we're booked up. And then you've got community members coming to us saying, hey, I'm talking to the OEMs. They have the chips. They're actually struggling to get their hands on wiring harnesses, uh, magnesium all sorts of other raw materials that they need, aluminum, et cetera. It's still a wild time on the new car side, Dad, and, and nothing's really lighting up in the sky saying, okay, it's resolved, everything's better. Like you said earlier, it's probably a couple of years before new car production is back to where it needs to be. Um, it, at least, it, probably at least two years would be my guess. 